In the last video, we saw how to set up a simple C++ program, first.cpp. We used the vi editor in that case to, to write this code. And if you were able to get that done, great. If you didn't, no problems. The next thing we will do is look at how to do this kind of thing, write a simple program in C++ using Eclipse. Eclipse is an IDE, that is a integrated development environment that sort of combines all of this, like having to compile stuff using a command instead of that. You just use some nice graphical user interface and instead of actually typing in a command to run a program, you just hit a button in this graphical user interface. So it's a really nice environment. Highly recommend that you use Eclipse. If you really want to use the command line, uh, more power to you. Go ahead. That's perfectly fine. So now I am starting Eclipse. This is uh, a new version, well, sort of new. It's Juno. And I am going to open up a new workspace. Just give me a second. And I'm going to set up a workspace. I'm typing off the screen. Okay. So I just set up a workspace and Eclipse is starting up. I've, I switched to a new workspace rather than the default. And you might want to do the same thing. And let me move this to fit inside this window. I'm hoping that you can see all of this. So if you run Eclipse, chances are you might have installed the Java version, and so that's fine. You can also install an, an, a custom CDT, that's C Development Toolkit, I believe. Um, and that might actually work out better, because it's just one install. That'll work fine on Linux. If you have your Linux uh, DVD from me, you don't need to install anything. It's already installed. If you're on the Mac, um, you can install pretty much any version as long as you also include the C development toolkit. If you're on Windows, there's a little bit of configuration that you need to do and a lot of things are kind of, it's a little bit harder to use. So I would highly recommend using Linux. Then I would recommend using Mac OS X and third would be Windows. My, it would definitely not be my first choice for writing C programs, C++ programs, but um, it is it is doable. It can be done. So if you really want to stick to Windows, go ahead. But my recommendation is that you use Linux or Mac OS X. Okay, so if you get to this point where you have, well, this welcome screen, it says Welcome to the Eclipse IDE for Java developers. First thing you want to do is go to the workbench. Okay. And you can get rid of some of these windows. You don't need all of this. Okay. If you want to check if your version of Eclipse is capable of running C++ programs, of setting up C++ programs, etc., you want to see this. So make sure that uh, when you run Eclipse, click on Switch Perspective. Let me just check what this. You should see a, a little button for Open Perspective. If not, go to, I believe, oh yeah, go to Window. And I know you can't see the top of this, but you go to Window and Open Perspective, Other, and then you should see this C++ is what you want. You click, want to click on OK. And so now you can create a new uh, C++ project by going to Project Explorer and then say New and then C++ Project. So right click, or if you're on a Mac, control click in the Project Explorer and say new, 
or you can I think the file menu will also get you to this place say new and then C++ project at this point what you want to do to get started up I would say there's many ways to do this my perfect my uh, preferred way of doing this is to start up with the hello world C++ project or you can go to make file and hello world C++ I think this might be better so I would say go with hello world C++ make file project there are a few problems with this but we can fix them okay and then you want to see something in your tool chain if you're using Windows and you don't see anything in your tool chain that means you're missing a part of uh, you're missing the C compiler and things like that. Okay, if you're on Linux, if you're using the live DVD that I handed out, you should be able to use this. So I'm going to say H E L L O. Okay, I'm going to use the default location. Everything else is default. I'm just going to use Hello World C++. There are a few problems with doing this, but we can fix them. Not a problem. Okay, so you might have spotted, some of you might have seen that we create a hello.cpp file. However, for whatever reason, um, the wizard actually sets up a C program. So this is not exactly what we want. This is what we need to fix up. All right, so that's, that's not that hard to fix up. Um, what you want to do is say iOS Dream. Okay. We can get rid of this. And I'm going to say the same kind of thing that we had before. C out. I'm hoping you guys can see this. It is pretty small. And maybe what I can do is make it a little bit bigger. I'm just saying see out, hello, everybody. E-N-D-L. Okay. At this point, you might see these errors, and that's fine. But we were getting the reason we're getting these errors, and this, this thing on the left is an error uh, indicator, is we are missing that one line. This is sort of like importing names. Okay, so I said using namespace std. Oops, spelling mistake on my part, my mistake. All right, once you fix those errors, you should be fine and you can save it. Now there's one thing that you wanna keep in mind, this is different from um, Java, is that when you save a file in Java uh, using Eclipse, when you save it, it actually compiles the file as well. C++, that does not happen you have to compile the file yourself. That is, you have to do the equivalent of doing that G++ command that we saw in the previous video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make this bigger. And I cannot remember how to do that, so I'm going to have to hunt. So, go to Eclipse, Preferences, C++, Editor, Text editors, colors and fonts, text font, you can edit that. I'm going to make it hopefully quite a bit bigger. Make it 18, apply, and OK. There it is. So if you were not able to read it before, I'm hoping you can read this very simple program have the important parts are well these comments are not important but you want the pound include IO stream you need that 
you don't really need this uh, we're just importing names sort of like the import statements in Java these two together sort of do the same thing as import then you set up a main so you might have noticed this is quite different from Java in Java you have a main class and inside that public static void main with a array of strings as a parameter um, this is equivalent to the Java public static void main it's a little different but uh, does the same job and then after that uh, this is like a system dot out dot print line and we saw that in the previous uh, in the previous video okay so at this point we are ready to compile so we don't have a lot of code in here that's okay we, that's all we want to test out so to actually compile you want to hit this hammer this hammer tool is the build button and it's gonna hopefully if everything works yes it looks like it did work we can check in our console yes so what it did was um, run the make utility and those of you in computer science 248 if you haven't already learned it, you will learn it pretty soon. The make utility. Okay, so you run make and it compiles. This is C++ is really just, uh, I believe it's the same as G++. And maybe it's slightly, maybe slightly different. Okay, and in this case we create an executable file but we don't have to worry about where it is it's you can see it it's over here and there's a hello.o object code and this is the hello executable file and then what we can do is to run you have to click on the green button with the arrow in it and you run it first time it'll ask you to choose a configuration to run I would choose GDB just a regular GDB this is the the new debugger GNU debugger and then you run it and it prints out hello everybody so if you see this good perfect you're in perfect shape to write C++ programs you have pretty much everything you need if you do not see this and if you get error message saying something is not found then you need to configure your environment so the bottom line is all of this in all of this works just about without any problems in Linux and Mac OS 10. Now you do have to do some installations. Uh, if you have the live DVD, all of this works just right out of the box. So you don't have to do anything to get this kind of program to work so that you can get started with writing your C++ programs. If I were using Windows, it's that's a different matter. Um, I would not recommend using Visual Studio, even though it is available and you can write C++ programs. There's so many differences in the default versions of Visual Studio that I just do not recommend it for this course. Now, if you want to do it on your own, that's fine. But for this course, I would highly recommend Eclipse or no IDE at all that's just using the command line like we did before and then you type in the commands but for assignments and things it's much better that uh, well if you are going to go this route use set up a make file and submit the make file along with the rest of your program but on the whole I would recommend my recommendation for this course for all the assignments all the labs all of that use Eclipse and set up uh, C++ projects and then bundle that up into a jar file so even though it's not a Java file you can use jar files that's just to bundle up your programs into one thing that you can submit to D2L so that is my recommendation for proceeding with uh, C++